everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful morning. I technically did not have time to hop on and talk about this this morning, but God was really emphasizing this, and so I'm making the time. Um, so if I kind of fly through this, I apologize, you guys. Um, but God was telling me to hop on and talk to you guys about Leviathan today. Now, I've spent a ton of time with you guys talking about Python Spirit and Jezebel Spirit in the past. I haven't spent quite as much time talking to you guys about Leviathan, and it's something that has really been acting up in this past season, which is why it was so important to hop on and talk to you guys. And this is going to apply to a lot of you right now, um, and it even applies to a lot of what's going on across the world right now, okay? So we see Leviathan, which represents pride. This is a spirit of pride, okay? And we see it originate in the book of Job in one of the places where it comes out in the Bible. Um, and I want to read you Job uh, 41, starting in verse 1. It says, Can you pull in Leviathan with a fish hook or tie down its tongue with a rope? Can you put a cord through its nose or pierce its jaw with a hook? Will it keep begging you for mercy? Will it speak to you with gentle words? Will it make an agreement with you for you to take it as your slave for life? Can you make it pet a bird or put it on a leash for the young women in your house? Will traders barter for it? Anyway, it, it keeps going. You kind of get the flavor. For time's sake, I'm going to skip down. I would encourage you guys to read this whole chapter on your own time. Um, it says, uh, I'm going to hop to verse 12. I will not fail to speak of Leviathan's limbs, its strength and its graceful form. Who can strip off its outer coat? Notice that's very symbolic of the place of hardenedness. This is a, a person who struggles with the spirit of pride. Leviathan is often very hardened in their heart stance. Amen. Um, who can strip off its outer coat? Who can penetrate its double coat of armor? A lot of times people with Leviathan will put up very strong walls and push people away. And that will serve as the quote-unquote armor to justify their stance of pride. Let's keep going. Who dares open the doors of its mouth, ringed about with its fearsome teeth? Its back has rows of shields tightly sealed together. Again, it pushes people out, especially people that it's afraid of um, and that are operating in a place of humility. Okay. Um, its back has rows of shields tightly sealed together. Each is so close to the next that no air can pass between. They are joined fast to one another. They cling to one another and cannot be parted. Its snorting throws out flashes of light. Its eyes are like rays of dawn. Flames stream from its mouth. Sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke pours from its nostrils as is a boiling pot over burning reeds. Its breath sets coals ablaze and flames dart from its mouth. Strength resides in its neck. Dismay goes before it. That's talking about dismay goes before a spirit of pride. Okay. The folds of its flesh are tightly joined. They are firm and immovable. This is what a person is like who is under this uh, influence of Leviathan or pride. They are immovable. They are firm. We're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. Its chest is hard as a rock, hard as a lower millstone. When it rises up, the mighty are terrified. They retreat before it's thrashing. Notice it's an intimidating spirit, right? The sword that reaches it has no effect, nor does the spear or the dart or the javelin. Iron treats it like straw and bronze like rotten wood. Arrows do not make it flee. Sling stones are like chaff to it. A club seems to it, but a piece of straw, and it laughs at the rattling of the lance. It under, uh, undersides are jagged potsherds, leaving a trail in the mud like a threshing sledge. It makes the depths churn like a boiling cauldron and stirs up the sea like a pot of ointment. It leaves a glistening wake behind it. One would think the deep had white hair. Nothing on its earth is equal. A creature without fear. It looks down on all that are haughty. It is the king over all who are proud. This is how we know that it's a spirit of pride. It is the king over all who are proud. I wanted to talk to you guys about the spirit of Leviathan today and how do we stand against this in a place of prayer, okay? Because this is acting up big time in this past season and currently. I've been praying for some people who um, have been struggling with this spirit in a past season. And let me tell you, it's hard when you know these people who are caught up in this Leviathan junk on their life, okay? So I want to tell you that Leviathan, the spirit of pride, likes to operate through a place of insecurity and deception, okay? Um, insecurity will cause people to operate from a prideful stance a lot of the time, okay? Um, and deception, you know, Leviathan blinds people. You read all throughout this passage that I just read to you guys. It talks about being hardened, okay? 
when you're in a place of deception, you're hardened to everything else that's going on around you. You only see what you want to see in that particular moment and in that particular time because you're under the spirit's influence, right? I'm not saying that necessarily everyone who has struggled with Leviathan is possessed, right? There are some who could deal with this kind of stuff. But a lot of people are oppressed by this spirit, okay? And it can still affect people in a very, very negative way, even saved people, even Christian people, okay? It's a twisting spirit. This is what it does. It twists words, actions, and intents of the people around them, especially people who love that person, okay? So that insecurity inside that person will cause them to kind of go into shutdown mode, and they will automatically assume the worst of people who are in their life. It's a twisting spirit. You know, the devil will put partial truths with a whole lot of lies and kind of mix it together where that person in that place of deception cannot discern truth from lies in that moment, okay? And it's a very defensive spirit, right? It's, it's a very standoffish, put-offish kind of spirit because it's operating from that place of rejection. Leviathan loves people who have had a past with rejection, parents who have rejected them, you know, significant others who have rejected them, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. Any kind of, you know, major encounters with rejection, Leviathan will try to latch on to these people a lot of the time. And pride will cause these people to, quote unquote, justify their actions and see things only through their lens or only through their perspective. I want to tell you guys, there's often no reasoning with someone who is under the influence of a spirit of Leviathan, okay? Um, because they're going to see what they want to see in that moment. How many of you guys have people like this in your life right now? I know I've encountered several people in my life who have been under the influence of this spirit before. And so... If someone is even in a place of outright sin in their life and they know it's wrong, this spirit will cause so much deception in their life that they will justify being in that place of sin because of the way another person treated them, because of circumstances, X, Y, Z. They will always find a way to justify their stance because that root of insecurity tells them I'm not enough unless my actions are X, Y, Z. And I assume this person is going to think less of me, so therefore I'm going to take this stance. And they will, you know, there's no reasoning because it's a spiritual problem, not just a problem going on in natural. You guys following me so far? So you've got to remember when you are dealing with someone who is struggling with Leviathan that your war is not against flesh and blood, and you're not going to defeat it by reasoning with them, talking through them. They've got to have an encounter with God, okay, to overcome this pride junk on their life, all right? And so you've got to pray for them. Pray for them to receive God's love. Pray against the mental. So much of Leviathan is mental warfare, right? It's wrong thought patterns. It's viewing things from skewed perspectives. It's all of this stuff. And so you've got to pray against that spirit that's operating through that person's life. And, you know, only then are you they going to be able to see the light. And God has to bring it to their attention. A lot of times if you're just a bystander trying to reason with Leviathan, you're just going to get hurt and taken out in the process, ladies and gents. You've got to know when it's time to take a step back and to say, God, I trust this situation to you. You bring down this spirit. I believe you to do this, Father God. Um Here's the other thing. Leviathan will often cause people to align with their flesh and immediate instant gratification. Leviathan loves this stuff, right? Um, when people are insecure, they're not thinking about the future. They're not thinking about what's best for them. They're thinking about that immediate moment because their life just feels like it's out of control, right? And so what the spirit will do is it will hit a person who's in a very vulnerable place and it will throw something flashy. It's almost like throwing a gold coin in front of someone, right? It will throw something flashy, easy, instant, quick in front of that person and it will not show them the consequences, but it will say, look at this thing. This thing is so cool. You should go after this. And it this spirit will appeal to their insecurity. It will make them feel more safe in the moment, quote unquote, and it will make them feel like, okay, well, at least I can kind of, you know, settle a little bit rather than dealing with the root of the problem problem and the spirit will come in the other thing that leviathan does is it very much takes a them versus me mentality i don't know if you guys have dealt with a lot of people who have dealt with pride issues in their life but it very much tries again it's mental warfare a lot of this it will go into that person who is struggling with this stuff and it will make it seem like the people who are for them are the enemy amen it will divide it's a dividing spirit right it's not a spirit that's of unity it will try to divide especially within the body of Christ. This stuff operates in churches too, ladies and gents, not just on an individual level. It's a very dividing spirit of them versus me mentality, okay? It often operates in those who have a past of rejection, not always, but a lot of the time it does. Um, and, you know, that person feels like they have to stand up for themselves. They have to prove their stance 24-7. It's a very much, I have to depend on my own. You know, I see this a lot 
or I have seen this a lot in maybe kids who grew up in a home that was not very stable, you know, because they had to take care of themselves. Maybe they didn't have the security of mom or dad being able to be there consistently to provide for them growing up. And so they kind of take on this stance of I've got to watch out for myself and they're not used to having God take care of them. And so they kind of take on this mentality of, you know, I've got to be strong. I've got to do all this stuff. And so that's how the spirit can wiggle its way in when we depend more on ourselves and we're depending on God in our lives. Okay. Um, other examples of areas where Leviathan runs very prevalent in our society. Leviathan's often very involved in politics. I don't even have time to get into all of that today, but that's definitely a thing. Um, the other thing is Jezebel spirit often likes to tag team with Leviathan, okay? And it likes to stroke Leviathan's ego, okay? Because Leviathan's all about pride, and Leviathan often comes from a root of insecurity. Pride often, ironically, comes from a root of insecurity a lot of time. We think of prideful people as just being obnoxious, awful, into themselves kind of people, but we don't realize that a lot of the times that comes from a root of insecurity. So Jezebel wants to take control. She wants to find someone she can manipulate. So if she can stroke Leviathan's insecurity and raise up that pride stuff, and she can still maintain control. It's that whole Ahab Jezebel concept, right? You know, then Jezebel will lock on an instant because Jezebel's real good at stroking egos, but she's also real good at causing major collateral damage, right? And so the, we see these two spirits operating together a lot for whatever reason. And then the other thing is Leviathan will fully justify a place of sin to save its stance, to save its back a lot of the time. Um, and so all of that to say there's a lot more that I could get into, and maybe we need to dive more into this in the future. But if you are dealing with someone who is fighting with this Leviathan stuff, you know, in their life, you cannot reason with a person like this, ladies and gents. It's just pointless arguments, and it will waste your time. What you need to do is surrender it to the Lord. What you need to do is pray for this person. Your war is not against flesh and blood. This is a spiritual war. You need to take it to the Spirit, come against this in the name of Jesus, and say, no, um, God, open their eyes, remove the deception, you know, help their hearts to become less hardened, help them to see hope. You know, Leviathan tries to take people's hope away. The person who is being afflicted by Leviathan, a lot of times they are very hopeless in that moment. They feel very hopeless. And so you've got to pray, God, help them to encounter your love. Help them to feel hope in their life. Help them not to feel discouraged. You know, cause this twisting of truth to stop in their life in Jesus' name. Because ultimately, Leviathan's goal is not only to take down everyone around them, right? But their goal is to take out the person who it's afflicting. And so you've got to understand, even though this spirit causes a lot of damage unknowingly in the people who are operating it, for those who are in their path, it also takes down the person a lot of the time or tries to who's being harmed by it. So pray against deception. Pray for your loved ones who are under the influence of this. Um, and I'd encourage you guys, do a deeper study on this. It's really eye-opening um, when you look at what the Bible has to say about Leviathan. And I want to encourage you guys, quit engaging in pointless arguments with the Spirit. And instead, you know, bring that person's life to the Lord. Pray for them that those blinders would be removed and that they would have a softened heart. Remember all those scriptures about how they're hardened? Pray for their heart that they would be softened to the Lord and they would be softened to the things that he has for them, that they would have hope and joy back in their life and that they would experience love and pray against that spirit of rejection. Amen. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll chat with you again soon.